Hey there! Welcome to the 14th Easy jQuery tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In the last tutorial, we learned about the get method in jQuery to make Ajax calls. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the get JSON method in jQuery. And I will show you how to get JSON data from a web service as well, and then output that data into a neat little table that I have set up here. JSON data is something that you'll get from most web services as well as API calls. Uh, if Whether you're calling data from Google or Facebook or Twitter or your own, JSON is a very good method of transporting information. Uh, feel free to check out my video on JSON where I introduce JSON, where we talk about JSON, talk about the format uh, and everything about it. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover the getJSON method and the, the service that we're going to look at and the data that we're going to look at is on easyprogramming.net. Feel free to use this dummy JSON file that I created called heroes.json. It has a bunch of superheroes, their names, their cities, and their strengths. And out of these four values, we're going to get three of them, the name, the superhero name, and the city, and output it onto this table here. So let's update our code from last time and see just how similar they are uh, in this tutorial. So I'll just change jQuery.php to uh, heroes.json. I'll also do get JSON. Uh, as you can see in the example here, you, have, you need to pass in three different arguments. Uh, the last two are data and success callback are optional. And you'll notice that there is no data type argument like there was in get method. Because the get method allows you to control, uh, gives you more flexibility on what kind of data you're expecting. Get JSON is, is more strict. It does give you uh, more control over what kind of data you're getting. So if you want future program, future people who are working on your script to stick to JSON, you can you can feel free to use this. But they're, they're mostly the same. Uh, and of course, like the other, uh, the, get, the get method, you, you can use done, fail, or always. You can also use a complete uh, method, which uh, is, is pretty similar to all of these. So if you know how to do one, you can know how to do all of them. I'm not gonna touch the done, fail, and always method. I'm just gonna keep them here just to show you that they work here. I change this to get JSON, change the URL here. I'm also gonna get rid of this fourth argument. If I don't, I will get an error. So before, we output it here. Let's open up the JavaScript console. Do this. Uh, remember, you need course enabled. So enable course, and then I'm going to run it. You see completed. I'm going to ignore that one. It always runs. And then you can see that there's seven different objects. I'll expand that. Seven different JSON objects that I'm receiving from easyprogramming.net on JS Fiddle. Uh, remember that you don't, you don't need cores if you're calling information from the same domain. I only need it because I'm going from jsfiddle to easyprogramming.net. And there are seven, and because there are actual JSON objects, I can actually expand them in the console here and, and look at them one by one. So we see that we're getting seven objects, so let's take all this information and output it onto our table here. So let me close this. I'm going to get rid of console.log. I'll just comment it out for now. And we'll do the data that we're getting. And we're going to apply the each method to this. I do have a tutorial on the each method, so feel free to check that out if you want to know exactly what I'm doing here. But I'm kind of passing in the i, which is the index. The data, I'll call it hero, each individual hero. Let's close it up so I don't forget. Uh, and then we'll do, uh, what did I call my table here? Let's go my HTML. So the table I called heroes table, uh, and then in the T body I have called heroes body. So I'll target that. I'm gonna turn off uh, cores because you can see that JS Fiddle is trying to save and it won't save if you have cores on. It's uh, one of the security features. So we'll do append. We'll create a new row. And then we'll, oops, I did this one wrong. There, we'll create a new row and then we'll then append uh, some cells. So we'll do TD. Uh, sorry, typing not well today. Forgetting parentheses all over. Whoops, okay. The TD, and then we'll append hero.name. Close the parentheses here. And then I'll just copy this two more times and I'll change this to hero superhero name. I think that's what I call the superhero name. And then this one will be city. 
Then after we're done with this, I need to do one more close parentheses to close the append uh, function here from the row. And then this should be done. Uh, let's see, update, uh, I'll set it a space. Whoops, not that. Let's turn on cores and then let's run it and then see what happens to our table here. I am, before I do that, I'm gonna actually just cheap. I'm just gonna create a bunch of uh, blank spaces here so that I, it gets moved up. So I'll do update, whoops, turn it off, update, turn it on, and then run it. So I get completed, right? Which is here after it's done. Always runs, which is here. And then we're gonna get the success callback function if everything works, okay? And there you go. You got Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Peter Parker. Uh, it's all it's all matched up based on what we're here. And since we didn't get strength, uh, it's not listed anywhere. But if I were to append it to you know Heroes that City, you know say you know strength is for some reason we'll do hero dot strength gth strength turn it off update and then let's run it always runs and then blah 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 and the strength is 100 you know but you know I'm, I'm gonna get rid of this because it doesn't look very good just to show you the the example that you know if the data is there you can call it you can you can run it turn it back on and then run it blah blah and there you go so this is a really good example of getting information from uh, a web service and then outputting it into however ma method uh, that you're using uh, jQuery does make it really easy you can see I didn't have to change a lot and you can use this little block of code here that I'm highlighting with the get method as well um, well, anyway, I hope you've learned uh, a little bit more about the getJSON method as well as outputting information onto the web page uh, in a neat little table. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please come back for the next tutorial. I'm planning on doing a couple more uh, Ajax videos, uh, including um, post and update and delete. Uh, just got to create the, the end the endpoints for those. Um, thanks for watching. If, any, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good one.